They, they had jumped on back in when Obama was going for the presidency. They jumped on Jeremiah Wright because Jeremiah Wright, in one of his sermons, he explained it so, so simply. And, and I've re really heard one actually explain, even some of the teachers and lecturers, even like ourselves, some of them go into all the facts, but Jeremiah Wright explained it very succinctly when he says, how Jesus or Yeshua, Jesus, the true Christ, Jesus Christ of the Bible, the real one, not the one on the left, but the one on the right, was a black man. He explained that he was a black man and that it was the white Romans, the Europeans, who killed this black man. And see, when you begin to comprehend the story in its proper context, it starts to make sense from, from B.C., you know what I mean? All the way to 2012 A.D. It starts to make perfect sense. So when Jeremiah Wright said what he said about in, in that particular sermon that we was looking for, I need to find that clip. I know we probably have that clip in our archives, but that clip where he said that it was the Romans. It was the white Italian, I think he said Italian Romans. And when he said that, that reminded us of this particular historical historical evidence right here. You remember this historical evidence right here? Look how, how easily this matches up, all right? Look at the one on the left, and then look at the one on the right, right? Look, look at the one on the left, and look at the one on the right. Once again, we have this clear matchup right here. So you see, this is the modern example. This is, this, is, this is history. This is history in our time. Fascist Italy, Italy connected with the Roman Empire against that um, Ethiopian witness, even the Ethiopian eunuch and the Queen of Sheba. Remember, Christ spoke about, and the Queen of the South is one of those signs. Says, no sign will be given to this generation except for Jonah, right? Jonah and the queen of Sheba. So here we're fascist Rome versus Selassie's Ethiopia or biblical Ethiopia is another testimony to this right here that we see, basically. So we see the biblical paradigm right here. You understand? The Antichrist, the goat on the left and the sheep on the right. Once again, we see the same thing. The goat on the left, Rome, representing Rome and that goat. You can go the goat of Mendes and you can get the Baphomet and all of that versus the line of Judah. The Baphomet versus the line of Judah. Now, in continuing where we were lecturing, where we was teaching on Second Thessalonians, this is a response and rebuttal to the white Jesus apologists. You know, a lot of these Christian apologists mm, that take so much offense with the first part of the Zeitgeist movie, and we also think the first part of the Zeitgeist movie, the 38 Minutes About Religion, was another continual whitewashing, you know, another continual whitewashing of it. Because, of course, if they use more accurate image of Jesus Christ, like he is and like he was and like he will be as a black man, then it would have been a little bit more evident to people. People could see that ancient, that ancient um, Egyptian connection. We said, I've called my what out of Egypt? I've called my who out of Egypt? Mm -hmm. Notice this was used in the Old Testament concerning the exodus of the Beta Israel, the Israelites. And it was also used in the New Testament concerning the exodus of the Bain Ha Elohim, Jesus Christos, the, the baby Yeshua, and his mother and his uh, stepfather, Joseph or Joseph. But let's continue with the scripture here. We're in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, where verse 3, where it says, Let no man deceive you by any means. Now, the image on the left has been an image that has deceived the whole world. If you flash that image to people anywhere in the world, the first thing that they will say is, that's Jesus. And just ask them, well, how do you know? 
Well, it's like this says, um, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And then you ask him, well, have you read the Bible? Have you studied the Bible? So you see how this sort of um, um, whitewashed Christian mind control also works as well. And coming out of Babylon also means to come out of that. And unfortunately, we're between like two different extremes. On one hand, we have the whitewash, you understand, New Ages. You understand white supremacy in the form of the New Ages. And then we have white supremacy in the form of the old regime, the old regime. And they're telling us that the New Ages are bad. You, you know what I'm saying? But then we're looking at them when they flash this image of this blonde hair, blue eyed Jesus, and don't want to even address the real issues, whether concerning Yeshua or concerning black people. You know, it becomes very much suspect. But let's hear what the word says. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, it says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Now, in the language, I think it says uh, apostasy, apostasy, apostasy. Apostasy means a falling away. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition that man of sin be revealed, the son, notice this is the son, S-O-N of perdition. Do you see the revelation? The, the goat is on the left. The son of perdition is on the left. Let's go to the next portion of this so we can bring this forward. Okay, we can bring this forward. There you go. Let, let him have fun and center stage. But let's find his um, antecedents. Let, let's find out where he is from. You understand? Let's find out, well, who is his, his family? Where does this image of Jesus come from? Well, we know this image comes from um, Cesare or Cesare Borgia or Borgia, the illegitimate son of Pope Alexander VI. And it comes from Rome. You understand? This image comes from Rome. And remember Caesar Augustus? Remember Caesar Augustus? So we have this image right here. So all this is basically the same thing. This, this was the old image that they wanted once to worship of this particular man right here, Caesar Augustus. Now, do you recall, you ever watch the Claudius movie, I, Claudius? There's a movie called I, Claudius. Actually, it's a, a British, kind of like a TV uh, masterpiece theater, like theater, TV show. But it's, it's very interesting. Several, I think 13 or something like that, 12, 13 parts or so. But it's very interesting. I think they have clips now on the YouTubes, so forth and so on. What you're seeing is, is um, the man of sin in the old world, and then we're going to have the man of sin, in the new world. And remember, the new world, the new world order, you already are in the new world order. You've been in the new world order since 1776, but actually much before that. But they was able to consolidate it and get it into a so-called workable system since roughly approximately about that time. Now, the Bible begins off in the New Testament with the story of the Jesus Christos with the census of Caesar Augustus. Caesar, this is where you get your month August. You understand? The month August. And if you don't want to, um, don't believe me, you understand? Do your own study, your own research. Right here, look at this right here. You see this title of this book? This the worship of Augustus Caesar. That's the title you see right there. The worship, excuse me, the worship of who? Augustus Caesar. Was, Augustus Caesar was, what nationality was he? Roman. What ethnicity? He was a Caucasian or so-called Caucasian or European. He's a white man. Augustus Caesar was showing you his actual, his actual um, images. These are some of the images right here of Augustus Caesar. This also is another image of Augustus Caesar right here. And you can see the title right there, Augustus Caesar. This is him with the wreath. And, and you see how they have these busts, these kind of head busts right here? These were actually put in temples, and people had to go 
and it was their civic duty as a good citizen of a Roman society or a Pax Romana to do worship, burn incense, bring some maybe fruits or oblations, say some um, things, make oaths and stuff like that to the image of Caesar. And they would parade these images around um, towns and provinces uh, among conquered people. And it was in the temple of Jerusalem that they sought to erect a statue, a statue similar to this, to Caesar Augustus. And this is what caused the revolt in Jerusalem that eventually led to 70 AD. Now, we're making all of this known so that when we get to this portion of the Bible, we can understand this in its historical um, context and significance. So it says that unless they first come uh, falling away, an apostasy, a going away from the faith. Remember what the, what the Jews, what the black Jews said when they refused their own Messiah, their own Christ? They said that we have no king but Caesar. Remember, Christ was coming, bringing in a monarchy, a monarchical system. And this is what makes this particular image so very interesting right here, is that his imperial majesty, Kedamawi Haile Selassie, represents that same Davidic kingdom. But... um. European whitewashed historians and liars would like to dismiss that as insignificant and like to say, well, they don't have evidence as though they are the arbitrators of truth. It's evident that Mussolini, fascist Rome, was driven by something to attack this African nation, this, this, this so-called to them, it was a backward African nation that was still living in biblical times. Get that. They were living in biblical times. So Mussolini wanted to do what his ancestors, you know, what his ancestors, like Caesar, he wanted to rebuild Rome. You understand? And the first victim, just like it was in the time of Jesus Christos, was black people. So Jeremiah Wright was correct, and he explained it in a very direct way. He says there was the Italians who crucified this black man, and basically saying, what has really changed? So now moving on with the scripture, in verse 5 it says, let's just go back just to, to um, connect all of this. Let's uh, minimize this right here, because this will now make a lot much more Sense as we start to bring as we start to bring this uh, together. Let's bring this picture over here. In fact, let, let, let's put them down right here. Let's cover up the V. Now, you know what is the V for victory, right? Roman victory, the Pax Romana. So you see right here. We'll, we'll, we'll put them right over here for a moment. All right. So verse three says, "Let." That means allow or permit no man to deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man, there's a particular man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now, what's so interesting is that when you study Roman history, there's a particular point in Roman history where there was a big conflict among the Romans about the deification, about the deification of Caesar, where some of the Romans, even at that time, did not want to, they, they wanted to worship the other gods, you know, like uh, Zeus and Apollo and Mercury and so on and so on. They didn't want to, they said, uh, Caesar's our emperor. You understand, but, but we don't, you know, want to worship him. But uh, Augustus Caesar was going around asking others, don't you think I'm a god? Should I be a god? And we'll find this to continue all throughout that particular, um, the Germanicus and the Roman, Augustan family, so forth, and so on. We'll find the same um, argument and contention going back and forth. And this leads to even Caligula. You understand? Which, and, and when we compare 
the Roman history, because remember, at the time of the true Jesus Christ, not that whitewash Caesare. Notice that image is Cesare, Caesar. So we have Caesar, 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 Caesar. You know what I'm saying? We have Caesar all over the place, Caesar. Mm -hmm. And the Germans continue that tradition down to their Führer in the Tsars and the Kaiser. But an interesting point aside is Tsar in the Ethiopic means a demonic spirit. It's a possessive demonic spirit. Remember what we said at the very outset? You judge a tree by its what? By its fruit. Very demonic outset. Uh, a very demonic, a, a demonic uh, character, right? Now it says right here, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day should not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God. When the Romans attempted to, and they actually did this, put the image of Caesar within the Jewish or the Hebrew holy place, that was the example right there. This is what led to, to the, um, the so-called Jewish revolt in history. This is exactly what led to the Jewish revolt in history. And so we have something very interesting going on. You understand? We have something very interesting going on. And what is this that we have going on? We have two choices that was given to the Hebrews, you understand, or the Jews, biblically, during the time of the crucifixion. And these two choices were, do you want me to crucify your king? Right? And they said, we have no king but Caesar. Now, the Bible tells us something very interesting and very important at this point in 2 Thessalonians, that this one, you understand, this one, this deceiver, and let's bring this down right here so you can see this deceiver right here, right? It says that he does what? Let's put his image right there because that's, that, that's what it's all about right there, right? All right, do the math and check the facts who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, has the white man, the European, exalted himself in his counterfeit image above all that is called God or that is worshipped? He has. And this is a clear demonstration from past, from biblical times to these latter days so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And this is exactly what we have on both hands of it, under the old Roman Empire and then under the so-called pseudo-Holy Roman Empire and under this fourth and diverse kingdom, this Anglo-American Gentile world dominion or under the so-called American Empire because another point aside, that image there of Jesus, which is modeled on Cesare Borgia, was created for World War II soldiers. It was actually created for World War II soldiers as some sort of a talisman to accompany them as they went out to fight the so-called Nazis. And then when blacks came back from the war fighting, fighting valiantly and heroically, they would be lynched, you understand, and killed while going abroad to fight against so-called terrorism abroad and Nazis abroad. There were Nazis right over here. You understand who was lynching them, killing them, castrating them, raping their women, molesting their children, and these people would go to church and worship that image there on the left. You understand? But how can you oppose that which is called God or that which is worshipped so that he as God sits in the temple of God showing himself that he is God? Remember ye not? that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. So this image that we have on the left was not revealed 
until it was time after the iconoclasty phase and when he whitewashed all the black images, all the true images of Christ and of the apostles and the people of the Bible, and that's where the Renaissance comes in. You see, the Renaissance came in partly to recreate a whole new future, futures, you understand, from the Renaissance time to the present time. So that same image you see right there, it is based on Roman Catholicism Renaissance ideas or white supremacist ideas. The Bible now tells us that, and now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. So there's a certain time. So when we start to check out the time of things, you know, the timing, the historical timing of things, we see all of this coming to pass. For the mystery of iniquity, iniquity is rebellion, the, the mystery of this rebellion. So we have an example from the old world, the Roman Empire. Remember, the disciples, and this is part of the Judas, you could say the Judas uh, sin or the Judas syndrome because you may ask the question um what's up with judas how come judas betrayed jesus judas was one of the disciples what would ever possess him to have him betray the one who he must have known did miracles healed the sick you understand they must he must have known that he was a a good man but see this goes back to what their theology was what was the theology of the first century of the first century um, Jews or Hebrews you see the Jews or the Hebrews thought that they would have a warrior Messiah and that the Messiah would come as a sort of a warrior and that he would fight you understand a type of a revolutionary battle against the Roman Empire this is basically why Judas Iscariot to betrayed Jesus Christos, the Messiah, the Messiah, Jesus. See, Judas, or Ascarotawi, he sincerely believed that he was protecting Judaism. He believed he was protecting the Judahites from a false Messiah, that he was protecting his fellow people. Just like many of these whitewashed Christian apologists, they also believe the same thing. And if he betrayed the Messiah, he would protect the Judaism of his time, the religious domination, the religious ideas. This is one reason why a lot of the whitewashed Christian apologetics won't accept any amount of proof or evidence concerning the King of Kings, concerning Kedemawi Haile Selassie, or concerning the true Jesus Christos, our black Lord and Savior. Because during this time, the time of the uh, disciples and the time that Judas betrayed, uh, Judas Askarotu betrayed Jesus, there were many false messiahs. There were many ones who said that they were the anointed one. They were the new king, so forth and so on. And Yehuda Askarotawi, he thought to himself that the Messiah, the Mashiach, Yehoshua, was an imposter. Judas thought that Jesus Christos was an imposter. So he thought that he was doing, he thought that he was doing his religious duty to betray Jesus Christos, to betray the Christ. Judas, Askarotawi, he also doubted. He had doubts about the claims of the Messiah, Jesus, just like many still have doubts of the claims of Hila Selassie I. They have the same doubts concerning the claims of his imperial majesty. But why? Why? Because he was not a Levitical priest. Because they mused. See, they had their own, their own 
interpretation of the theology. Like when you hear a lot of these apologetic uh, white, white Jesus apologists even today with the whole New World Order conspiracy, they'll tell you exactly how it's going to happen, like the Left Behind movie or the Left Behind book or a lot of these other Omega Code or Megiddo or these other kind of, of um, biblical diversions. They, they begin off with some points in the Bible, but then they write these, they use their imagination. And if people are convinced by it, then they tell themselves that it must be the correct thing. So Judas, Ascaroto, he doubted the claims of Jesus Christos' messiahship because he was not a Levitical priest. He was of the tribe of Yehuda, not of the tribe of Lewi. And the Judahites were under the impression See, the Judahites of the time of Jesus Christos, they were under the impression that the Mashiach, Moshiach, would only come from the tribe of the Levites. They believed that when the Messiah comes, he would be a Levitical, a Levitical priest. And you can see Numbers 1 and 50, chapter 1, verse 50, where it says, But thou shalt appoint the Levites, Lewawian, over the, the Mishkan, the tabernacle of testimony of over all the vessels thereof and over all the things that belong to it. They shall bear the tabernacle and all the vessels thereof, and they shall minister to it. They shall serve, they shall serve it, minister, and shall encamp round about the tabernacle. Then we have in Hebrews... Chapter 7, verse 5, it says, And verily, they that are of the sons of Lewi, who receive, who makebel, who kabbalah, kebbalah, the office of the priesthood, of the priesthood, the kuhinet, you understand? Uh, they have a commandment to take the tithes, the asarat of the people according to Torah, that is, of their brethren though they come out of the loins of Abraham. Many of the Dekamezamorit of the Mashiach, Iesus, outside of the original 12, outside of those original, we could say, besides Judas or Askrotawi, they became disillusioned. They were disappointed with his actions. And they left his congregation. Why? Because they had these preset notions. It's just like the world today. And even the world at the time of his imperial majesty, you understand, speaking about that real dawn of that new age change, 1930 with the coronation of the king of kings. There were many, and if you go back to that time, and there's writing and documentation of what people believed was going to happen and how the end of the world and how the new age and you can go through a lot of that. They call those, um, they have different names for these biblical interpretations of what was going to happen in the last days or, or how God will return or Christ will return, so forth and so on. So in the same way, the first century Judahites, you understand, or Jews who were Ethiopian Hebrews, described them according to the ethnology of today. We have to describe the Jews according to that. And Tacitus says that the Jews were of the race of the Ethiopians. So that means even Tacitus, the Roman historian, is testifying that the Jews of the time of Jesus Christos were black or were Ethiopian. And now that also qualifies... You understand our point excellent, excellently. You understand, but of course they would like to dismiss that. But this is the same evidence. They go to Tacitus for various other things of Roman history, and they put it together, and they teach these things from those references, and nobody disputes it. So why should they dispute it now when Tacitus says that the Jews were of the race of the Ethiopians, of the Ethiopian race? In other words, of the black race is how we would say it today. So many of the disciples, therefore many black folks, many, can we be a little more um, intimate? Many of the niggers, you know what I'm saying? Many of the Negroes, you know how niggers are. And see, black folks get this, some of the white folks might not really be able to get it, you understand, know immediately, but they might be able to intellectually understand what we are saying here. You understand, know when you understand the nature or the fallen nature 
of black people. They wanted what kind of Messiah? They wanted a Messiah.